Hi again then guys and welcome to my 20th pick out of my top 30 car wish list for a future Gran Turismo game, most likely GT7 at this point, possibly as DLC, but obviously it would be nicer if some of these cars were to get into the game as a day one release. And this particular model has been featured on other racing games in the past, most notably Forza Motorsport, and it's a car which, as with some of the other cars that are among my favourites, is very much a Marmite car. A polarising car. A car which people either love or hate. And for me personally, I've actually run that entire spectrum myself. Because when I first saw this car, I hated it. I thought it was hideous, I didn't like it at all. Much in a similar way to... A very similar car, interestingly enough, which I featured a few episodes ago in this same series, the Devon GTX. And this car is actually a very interesting rival for the Devon GTX. They are two very similar machines, and they're actually perfect rivals. And the reason why is because as the Devon is mechanically based on the Viper, this car, which is called the Batoni Mantida, which is Italian for Mantis, very appropriately for the car, is based on the Viper's biggest rival, the Corvette. Specifically, the C6 Corvette ZR1, the ultimate sixth generation Corvette. Now that Corvette already has incredible performance, so you take that even further into supercar territory and you're gonna have yourself a monster. Now, looks aside, Regardless of whether or not you like the look of this car, consider its spec and performance. It shares the 6.2 litre supercharged V8 with the ZR1. It retains the front engine layout, the rear wheel drive, but it's more powerful. The engine produces 638 horsepower and, thanks to an upgraded exhaust, puts out 680 horsepower in the case of the Mantida. 680 horsepower is serious territory for a supercar, especially one as rare as the Mantida. That's not all though. It puts out over 600 foot-pounds of torque and, most importantly, weighs 110 kilos less than the ZR1 making the Mantida weigh in at a pretty respectable 1430 kilos. It's also more aerodynamic than the ZR1, endowing it with an overall top speed of a remarkably good, actually, 220 miles per hour. It can also hit 60 in 3.2 seconds. So this isn't just some fancy art piece that isn't designed to be driven. This is a fully functional, full-on, hardcore supercar. It sounds fantastic, has striking, eye-catching looks, regardless of whether you think it's good-looking or not. It certainly grabs your attention. And it has performance, which, despite the fact that many people don't think about it that often, is actually better than many mainstream supercars. It's faster than a P1, it's faster than an Enzo, it's faster than a LaFerrari, a 918, a Carrera GT, Zonda Cinque, and various other extremely popular supercars. The Mantida doesn't get anywhere near the kind of attention or fan base that those other cars have, but it can beat all of them. Maybe not for acceleration necessarily, although in many cases it can beat them with 3.2 seconds to 60, but 220 miles per hour is nothing to be sniffed at. And the ZR1 is a fantastic engine in terms of full range performance. And what I mean by that is that many supercars or cars of a performance nature in general tend to be good at a specific thing, such as either acceleration or top speed, maybe mid-range acceleration, top end acceleration or low end. But they also tend to have downsides. The great thing about the ZR1 is as an engine package overall, it doesn't really have any downsides. It gives you fantastic low-end, mid-range, and top-end acceleration, and a strong top speed for its power. It's also got effortless torque and is very responsive to tuning. 
all of which adds up to make the Batoni not only a fantastic supercar in real life, but more importantly in the case of Gran Turismo, gives it potentially incredible tuning potential. Consider the ZR1 that we already have on the game. It can be tuned to 1,050 horsepower, and it's capable of close to 300 miles per hour in the game without NOS or slipstream. The Mantida is more powerful, more aerodynamically efficient, and lighter. Imagine what it could do when fully tuned. You're automatically guaranteed to have at least 1050 horsepower, the same as the ZR1 if not more, but it weighs less. Even with a full weight loss package it could potentially weigh another 100 kilos or so less than the ZR1 considering that it starts off being 110 kilos less anyway. And the acceleration is already quicker than the ZR1. The top speed is already better. So the top speed could be easily around the 300 mile per hour mark if the top speed physics of Gran Turismo aren't changed before, say, GT7. Which, to be honest, I hope they will be, because it would be nice to have more realistic comparisons of cars, even if that does mean that they get slower. Because at least if they do get slower, they'll all get slower at the same time. That's the ideal scenario anyway. Whether or not that would actually happen seems very unlikely, but that would be what I would like to see happen. Bring down all of those top level supercars, but also all of the lower level supercars down to say the vehicles that do around 220. Bring them down by about 20 or 30 miles per hour, just to make it more realistic. That sounds like a horrible idea, but trust me, if it happened to all of the performance cars, it would still be a levelling effect. The cars wouldn't be at a disadvantage because they would all be slower. It would just make the game more realistic overall and at least the cars that are dealt bad hands such as the Speed 12 and the XJ220 could have a chance to actually be a little bit more competitive if those other cars are actually made more realistic bringing them down away from that ridiculous 300 mile per hour region. It also means that vehicles like the X2010, X2011, Tomahawk, etc. would actually fulfill what they're supposed to do even better. Because those vehicles, specifically the Red Bull, are supposed to be the ultimate race car. If you've got road cars achieving almost the same speeds, that kind of undermines the concept of the Red Bull. So by making the road cars more realistic, it makes the Red Bull look even better. And that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But getting back to the Mantida, the car is interesting for another reason. It's a car which has a couple of misconceptions. There are some who would say that there are two of these cars in existence with a planned production of 10 and a price tag of $2 million each. That's actually completely false on every point. There is only one Mantida and there will only ever be one because it was made for a private customer who upon receiving the car requested that they not build any more and since he himself commissioned the car they agreed to it. The reason why people think there are more is because it was repainted and spotted in different locations but it's actually just the same car that started off as red and was then repainted pearlescent white which can sometimes appear under certain lighting conditions as silver Yet another reason why people think there are more than there actually are. Now the price tag was believed to be in the region of $2 million, which seems appropriate for a one-off model based on a Corvette. And it is in every sense a true supercar. Just like with the Devon GTX, it takes an already brilliant super sports model and takes it into a whole new level of exotic territory. I can completely understand why some people would prefer the ZR1 in its standard form. Certainly visually, it is much easier on the eye and much more of a conventional good looking car. And I am a fan of the C6 Corvette, very much so. I actually prefer it to the Viper personally. But the Mantida has really grown on me. And one of the reasons for that is actually due to Forza. Likewise with the Devon. Having those cars on the game and using them actually changed my mind about them. And that's happened on Gran Turismo as well. Forza is also one of the reasons why my mind was changed about the Ferrari FF, which I initially hated but is now my dream car. 
So the proof that games have a massive effect on marketing is clearly true. It does affect your opinion on cars. And the fact that most Gran Turismo players have never driven a Mantida or a Devon GTX on any racing game would automatically make you feel less interested in the car. I mean, why would you be interested in it? It's just a rebodied Corvette. Whereas being able to drive it on Forza, you really feel just how good a car it actually is. Were it on Gran Turismo, well, as I said earlier, depends how realistic the top speed physics are going to be. If they continue to be as unrealistic as they are, this could easily be a 300 mile per hour machine, if not quite easily more. It could, in fact, be one of the quickest supercars on Gran Turismo. If it were more realistic, it would still be one of the best in the game due to the sheer power of that ZR1 base engine and a fantastic track car, because the ZR1 is still one of the fastest production cars around the Nuremberg Ring at 7 minutes and 26 seconds. The Mantida has not, to date, been tested around the Nuremberg Ring, but the owner does have plans for the future to do so. Weighing in at 110 kilos less and having more power means that it would definitely be a quicker car. It has literally every advantage over the standard ZR1, and the standard ZR1 is already a brilliant performance car. So the Mantida is a car which is definitely not for everyone, but I actually like it for that. I think it's unfortunate that the owner requested that it would stay as a one-off. I can understand why he did that, and if I was in his position I would probably do the same. But it is unfortunate that there aren't more than one, because to me that just makes it cooler if more people get the opportunity to own one, and it gives people more of an opportunity to actually see one say at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which this car has been featured in, in the past. As far as it, how it fits into Gran Turismo, well there is a precedent for having this car in games because it's on Forza, so it wouldn't be overly difficult for them to source the car. Plus when it comes to the performance, it should be relatively easy for them to map it considering the ZR1 connection. As far as PP and price, I'd like to see the PP start at around 610, 620, something like that. This is actually one of the very few road cars in the game that I think could legitimately be capable of over 700 pp when fully tuned, especially if we could fit it with a flat floor, which does increase the pp even more. Not necessarily the kind of car that would usually have a flat floor conversion, but if we were allowed to do so, it would definitely be over a 700 pp car, and would be a perfect rival for the ZR1s, ACRs, and various other supercars. As far as price, I would like to see it cost, fairly obviously, at least a million credits. It really ups the exotic level of the ZR1. The ZR1 is actually very well priced on Gran Turismo, being around 100 and something thousand, if I remember correctly. I believe it's 184,000. This car is a one off, which automatically increases its value. It's incredible to look at, like nothing else in fact, and it has among the best performance of a supercar you can buy. Certainly one of the quickest one-off supercars you can buy. So at least a million credits would seem appropriate for this vehicle. But overall, that's it for this particular pick. If you are of course new to the series, feel free to slap down below what your dream car, or cars, and maybe multiple of course, there's no limit on how many it has to be, that you would like to see on a future Gran Turismo game, and also any other thoughts that you might want to express about GT Sport or GT7, maybe what kind of racing circuits you'd like to see, or new features entirely. Something like bringing back the race car modifications from Gran Turismo 2, or perhaps adding Jim Carner circuits, or bringing back rally stages. I, for one, would personally love to see rally stages return to Gran Turismo, and if I could have my opportunity of running things, which I obviously don't and never will, I would love to see a collab between Gran Turismo, or Polyphony, and the makers of the WRC games. Because when it comes to rallying, the physics, damage, and sound effects that those rally games have, such as Colin McRae and WRC, are completely unmatched. They are very, very fun games. You get really sucked into the action, and the rally cars feel perfect. They look great, they sound great, the environments are amazing, 
the physics of the cars with the mud, the damage, etc. is spot on for rallying. And if you could get a company like that to team up with Polyphony and just build the rally portion of the game, that would be an awesome experience to have the traditional Gran Turismo track racing, but with the rally events as they have never been on Gran Turismo. Ultra realistic and far more fun than Gran Turismo's rallying was, because at the end of the day, you could just bounce off the walls and still win the rally event. There's no fun in that. But that's what I'd personally love to see. Feel free to slap down below what kind of features you'd love to see in a future Gran Turismo game. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.